please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on they feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the street, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the sewer man yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Yee! What's up, everybody? Hey. Oh, it's yeah. Monday yeah, yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> He loves us Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen I am your host, Tim Ross I hope you're all doing well I love you guys very much I hope you had a great weekend I hope Monday thus far has started off great Because this is the day that the Lord has made And I will rejoice Not might I will rejoice and be glad in it Take That's, us there Listen, I That's just did Okay, Do so um, uh, I love you guys so much. Shout out to uh, Press B. Shout out to my dwellers. Shout out to my promoters. I love y'all so much. The community is strong. You heard, mm -hmm. huh? If it's one thing I don't, if it's one thing that I don't, do not have to question is if the community is strong, <laughs> cause it is. Y'all have proven that. Y'all are y'all are resilient. Y'all more resilient than I am. Sometimes I be a little tender. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Being out here in these streets, you know what I'm saying? Being kind of like in the little public square. Sometimes I be a little tender. Y'all be y'all be holding me down. <laughs> y'all be ready to go after some people. Um, so I love you guys. Uh, shout out to all of you all, you generous souls, um, through Cash App and, and PayPal. Thank you so much for your generosity. Um, whether it's a dollar, hundreds of dollars, or thousands of dollars, um, your support means the world. I do not take it for granted. And uh, you allow us to keep bringing this type of content, this vulnerable content, this honest content, this open content, this transparent content. Uh, you, you continue to provide us with a safe space for us to give each other the gift of our vulnerability. You know, I realize I'm not one of them hosts that, um, or of a platform that's mm -hmm. like, yes, come, come sit down on my couch. <laughs> Tell me what your problem is. Oh, I'll fix it. I've been through everything yeah. ever. It, uh, I've, whatever the question is, I have an answer to it. Whatever you're dealing with, I know exactly what to say. No, man, this, this is where we share vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I, I don't just hold space for you, but... You need to hold space for me. Maybe I should have, if I was smart enough when the Lord first told me to do this, I would have said that up front. Like yeah. that first episode where I was strangling the mic. Yeah. I think I think I would have said, like, this needs to be a safe space for you and me. You, you know what I mean? Um, uh, because if, if it's not, then how can we love each other, like, right where we are? Like, I'd rather be loved and you know everything about me yeah. up front than to be loved for the piece of me that I want to represent all of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Holy Spirit. Okay. I'm gonna let that marinate real quick. <laughs> but that but that's what I that's how I feel. Like yeah. like I think a lot of people are out here giving the piece of them that they think that, you know, people will accept. Mm-hmm. And they're afraid to 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 give all of them because they won't be accepted. Yeah. Like like oh, I'm not gonna tell them that because they won't love me anymore or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you just know everything about me up front 
and then you can just make a very honest assessment. Yeah. I mean, th think about how much smoother dating would go. In the dating world, they call it oversharing. Like, you've overshared. <laughs> and I'm like, I, it's, it's an issue that I have because I'm the same way as you, Tim. You're going to know this. <laughs> because you, if you can't rock with this, I'm sorry. It, like, 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 okay, so oversharing. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm open to receive that. Okay. Yeah. Here, here would be my, please. Here, here would be my response. My response. My what raises. Here's what gets. Here's where it has piqued my interest. I'm now curious as to if I'm oversharing on this date. Mm -hmm. They didn't say if it was date one, date two, date three, day four. So I right. don't know. Right. Maybe there is oversharing on date one. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know. I, I've been married. For almost twenty five years, I can confirm there is. Okay, okay, <laughs> from okay. what I've been told. Okay, okay. Well, well, well. When is it appropriate? Yes. To tell this person mm -hmm. the truth. That's that's what that's literally right where I'm at. That's what I'm navigating. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, so when do you? Because I don't want to lie to him. I, I don't want to lie. Right, right. So, so if if you know when you go on them on them little interviews, <laughs> um, uh, uh for. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the way I need to go about this, dude. I'm, I'm I, asking for dates. I need to start asking for interviews. I just, I, I literally just expose myself as an employer and not an employee. Yes. Because the way I even said that, I'm like, oh, have yeah. I? When's the last time I worked for somebody? Right. Like, I'm, I'm like really throw right. When you go on them little interviews. Yeah. I've, I've heard of these things called interviews that people have to go on. I've been on those before, so please, I can identify. Please, I'm not. I haven't been. I haven't been running a business that long. But when you go on an interview. Um, you're ultimately going to be asked, you, you know, why do you think you deserve this job and yeah. what makes you a good candidate of this job? But then they ask the dumb question that everybody never wants to answer, which is tell me about a time mm -hmm. where like you didn't show up as your best or yeah. give me three of your weaknesses that we should know about. Well, I'm a kleptomaniac and, you know, yeah. I'm probably going to use your copy your paper to print out flyers for my parties on the weekend. Like, like, like who's going to, like, yep. right? So, but I would like to know. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're self-aware enough to know. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. So, great story. Once upon a time, <laughs> I, I was uh, at the Potter's house. And, uh... Uh, this is January. I'll never forget this as long as I live. January 2006. I'm at I'm at PH. Uh, I'm an elder at the church at the time, and uh, they want me to pray to open up service. Yeah. Nine o'clock service. This is back when uh, Bishop was had two services. So nine o'clock service starts. I go up there. I pray, and this is black church prayer, right? So it's it might as well be a sermonette. That's what it feels like, right? Yeah. But yeah. You, two and a half minutes, boo yeah, hit it, get out of there, right? So I walk back out. I'm walking back to go sit down. Bishop Jakes is standing there. And um I I go stand and then he 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 comes up behind me mm -hmm. so I can see like out of my peripheral, this mm -hmm. man is right here, right? And yeah, he is. I'm five nine. He, he what is he? Six three? Really? I don't know. Six two, six three, something like that. So he says, uh, "Do you know where the Papados is?" <laughs> and, he, and he and he named the location. I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Meet me there after church." I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that prayer must have sucked, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, that yeah. prayer must have sucked. Yeah. So Juliet and I meet him at Papados. It's just the three of us, and we're there for like four and a half hours. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest moments of my life, and I don't know why we're there. So I'm asking him questions that he's probably like, who? First of all, fam, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you even know why I'm meeting with? And I asked yeah. him, like, why are you meeting with me? And, and, and 
he he was like, uh, well, I didn't ask him that to the end. Let me stop trying to go sequentially because I'm a sequential person. Mm -hmm. Here's what was interesting. I did not know why he wanted to meet with me. Yeah. But I did not want him to have a perception of me without knowing mm -hmm. all of me yep. Yep. where I was right then and there. Yep. And so I was like, sir, I have no idea why we're meeting, mm -hmm. but I just want to let you know. And, bro, when I tell you I broke down everything I was struggling with at the time. Wow. In front of Juliet. Yeah. Because it ain't like she don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. That woman lives with me. Right. She sleeps in the same bed with me. She is me. So I'm not about to sit here in front and, you know, grab her knee under like, hey, mm -hmm. don't say nothing that can mess this up. Yeah. No, nah, nigga, I'm about to mess it up. If it's going to be messed up, it's on me, yeah. right? B because I don't want him to have any perception of me that's false. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to tell him yeah. what this is. Mm -hmm. And I just laid it all out. Here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what I'm dealing with. Here's where I, we are in our marriage as a result. Boom, 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 boom. He listened to all of that. Okay, thank you so much. And I really, like the fact that you even would be forthright to tell me that. Mm -hmm tells me about your character. Like, I really appreciate it. May, that was in June 2006. I'm sorry, that was in January 2006. May 2006, mm -hmm. I'm on the road with Josh McDowell uh, wrapping up his Bold Truth Tour. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was in Metairie, Georgia. I think that's how you pronounce it. Somebody from Metairie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called Metairie, Georgia. I was in Metairie, Georgia, and that was one of our tour stops. I get a call from uh, Potter's House Human Resources. We would like to extend an offer to you, be one of the associate pastors at the Potter's House of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I said, for what? <laughs> the call was out of the blue. I, yeah. talked, to, I, I yeah. talked to Bishop Jakes in January, fam. Yeah. It's now May. Wow. There's been no follow-up. There's been no nothing. Yeah. I said, associate pastor of what? They said, you're going to be the associate pastor of young adults. Mm -hmm. It didn't even exist. He, he, he was bringing me in and entrusting me mm -hmm. to launch a young adult uh, group that had never existed. Yeah. You know how that came? Yeah. That came off of an interview that wasn't even an interview with me oversharing. Wow, dude. Wow. I'm telling you right now, I'd rather know. I'm glad you know your strengths, but do you know your weaknesses? Mm. I'm glad you know what you're good at, but do you know what you're bad at? I'm glad to know what you can handle. Do you know what you can't handle? Yeah. Like, if you don't, if, if we don't get to the point that we can start being honest about that type of stuff, mm -hmm. we're only playing ourselves. And that's that's why I believe you got pastors out here burning out. That's why I believe you got worship. Uh, leaders that are literally disintegrating in front of our eyes, like in between worship sets, they're disintegrating mm -hmm. in front of our eyes because they're 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 still trying to present themselves in one way, knowing they're struggling all these different ways, but they don't think that they can bring that part of them to the to the forefront and still be accepted. Yeah. And this is where this is where a lot of churches. I'm not saying the entire church, but this is where a lot of churches are fatalistically flawed is we've literally turned our congregations into fakers. Because mm. it starts from the head and goes down. Whatever's in the head going to be in the body. Yeah. So if the pastor got a fake, guess what he going to have? He going to have a fake young adult yeah. pastor. He going to have a fake worship pastor. He going to have a fake youth pastor. He going to have a fake children's pastor. He going to have fake admins. He going to have fake elders. Why? Because he got a fake. I'm not faking. And y'all know that. Y'all know I'm not faking. Yes, sir. Y'all heard I'm not faking. <laughs> y'all see I'm not faking. <laughs> you feel me? So so yeah. I, I'm I'm just we, we tell people to come as they are, but as soon as they show up, we're like, yep, we're gonna need that to stop right there. Yeah. So I I'm I'm um 
you know, I'm, 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 when I tell you I rest solely and squarely in, um, uh, second Corinthians 12, Mm -hmm. let me just read it. I got my, um, Holy Bible, Santa Biblia today. (laughs) I left my other Bible at Daystar with Mike Todd. Therefore, I had to pull out my my half and half, Ingles y es, Espanol. Um, so Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, dos Corintino, uh, Corintios, ¿sí? ¿Sí correcto? Sí. No, correcto. Am I correct? Okay, sí, sí. Um, three different times. Okay, great, great, great. So here's what it says. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. This is Paul's thorn in his flesh, right? Uh, so uh, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my what? Weakness. Oh, no. Sammy, mm-hmm. don't say that so fast. Mm-hmm. That's not what it says. Oh, my bad. It says, therefore, I will boast about my strengths and how anointed I am and how much oil I have on my life and how much God is working through me and how much favor I have on my life and the blessings of the Lord that maketh me rich and add no sorrow with it. I'm going to boast about that. I'm going to boast about the riches that I have and the car that I drive and the house that I live. I'm going to boast about how many books I have written and how many books have sold. We have different versions. Oh. (laughs) Is this not what it says in Espanol? Oh, my bad. No, we don't say none of that. Mm. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Here's the problem. We are uncomfortable with weakness Mm. because we live in a Western culture that promotes strength. Yep. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to stop and pray for Israel right now. Mm. Ooh, he just dropped that on my head as soon as I said Western culture. So, Father God, we lift up Israel to you now, and God, we pray um, that you would protect your people. We ask that you would protect Israelis. We ask that you would protect Palestinians. The war that the government and these religious factions are having are killing innocent people Mm. in Israel and that it is killing Palestinians. So, Father God, I pray that you would just put a hedge of protection, that you would come in with your love, that you would come in with your peace. God, that you would protect people while this war is raging. Not on one side, on both sides. You died for the entire world, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that the innocent people that are caught up in the middle of these war factions that you would keep them safe. God, we know the reality that people have already lost their lives, and I ask right now in Jesus' name that you would be comfort. You would be comforting. You would be comfort to Palestinians, that you would be comforting, that you would be comfort to Israelis. Mm. God, I pray for those hostages that have been taken. Um, I pray that you bring them home safe. Just intervene. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Uh, When the world makes no sense, we, we trust in your divine power and your, your sovereign will um, to help us through. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just had to stop. Um, and uh, there, there's, uh, there's a link that we'll put on this pod um, to help a particular friend of mine that I have in Israel um, that is getting uh, aid out to those that have been affected. You know okay. the website? Um, I do. I uh, I can send you the link right now. I'll update it right now. Okay, great. Yeah, let me her, let me I'll send you the let me send her. you the link right now. Mm, mm, mm. Let me get throw that in the chat too. Great. Cause we live, baby. We are live. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, sending this to. I'm gonna send it to the three of y'all, and then y'all can figure out what to do with it. Easy. Gracias. Okay, cool. All right, so um, ooh, okay, that feels better now. Hmm. Come on, Holy Spirit, just 
Do what you want to do. Okay. So, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Cada vez el me dijo, mi gracia es todo lo que necesitas. Mi poder actúa mejor en, en la debilidad. Mm. Así que ahora me alegra jactarme de mis deliberadas para que el poder de Cristo pueda actuar a través de mí. Ooh! Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Don't tell me that boy. Hey, that's a bop right there. Hey, I can hear Fergie on that. Hey. <laughs> Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Don't tell me that boy can't read it. No, that's a Missy Elliott. I, mm. Oh, I need Missy on that hook. I can hear Missy all over yeah. that. Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Don't tell me that boy can't read it. That boy can't read it. Oh, okay. That, hey, that's a bop. Ooh, I'm glad that's recorded because I'm going to have to go back and that might be a hook on something. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be on, but... Your next album. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, all I'm saying is we need to understand and know. Yeah, dude. When you were talking uh, and, and you said we don't, we don't uh, project fakeness here. We don't do that. The, we're the, not going to do that. The thing that hit my brain... <laughs> Because we're not fortune tellers. Ooh. We're not sitting here deceiving people, saying we have answers that we don't have. Ooh. Just based off of context. Ooh. And so, like, that's that's what hit me. I was like, yeah, we don't do that. We we show you the wires. Yeah. We take away the smoke and mirrors. Yep. And yeah, we, we say, do. No, this is actually what's happening. This is actually this is actually what's happening. This is actually how we're feeling at the time. Um. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's be yeah. transparent about that. When I tell y'all the amount of warfare that I'm going through right now, mm -hmm. around the launch of this doggone app, mm -hmm. and I can, I can, I can, I know it's actual spiritual warfare. Yeah. And um, let me tell you why I know it's spiritual warfare. It, it, I'm not talking about like opposition against the app, and all, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm feeling so much. Oh. Insecurity. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling so much doubt. I'm feeling so much um, temptation. Like, like, like. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Yeah. When, when this, when, when I, when this type of thing be hitting me like this, I wanna, I wanna look at porn and masturbate. Yep. Yep. That's little Timmy. Showing up in my 48-year-old body, trying to go get me to play with a toy yeah. that I put back in the box. It, it, it helped little Timmy survive at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Two. But then it started not to be a good look, and I had to go, had to go address that. Yeah. Like, little Timmy, you can't use that no more. I'm yeah. glad you found something that can medicate you and get you through what you was going through when you was a kid. Da, 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 da. You're an adult now. We got to use different things. But that's the first thing he wants to reach for. I wish I wish it was a thousand miles away. Yeah. Mm -mm. This, it'd be about right here on 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 in seasons like this. It'd be right right here. Yeah. Everything cool. It'd be way over there. Right. Seasons like this be breathing on your neck. Then you start having dreams. Yeah. I don't know how how it be hitting everybody else, but then then your body's like, oh, you're not gonna mm -hmm. you're not gonna entertain the thought. Cool, go to sleep. <laughs> then you, then you have a dream so wild and vivid, you wake up and you be like, I swear I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be like, I've been I've been in this bed with you the whole night, baby. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm just keeping it a buck, man. Yeah. Like warfare is like, I don't like it. I don't like it. And here's the thing: there's the only thing I can do is confess it, because that's how it shrinks. 
You want to you want to shrink something that's bothering you? Talk about it. So we talking to, again. We don't ever script these pods. We don't ever sit down and go, okay, we're going to go this way. We're going this. We just sit down and just start talking because that's what this is about. And I'm just telling y'all right now, I'm, I'm confessing my weaknesses to the whole community. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, this endeavor to launch this app is scary. It is, it is big. It's bigger than me. Um, you know... The, the, what I hear most often in my head, the lie that I that I hear in my head most often is, it's gonna flop, nobody's gonna subscribe, and you're gonna embarrass yourself in front of everybody. Mm. And I'm like, well, I'm just gonna have to embarrass myself in yeah. front of everybody, because yeah. I believe the Lord told me to do this. Like I didn't come up with this, yeah. so I'm like, I'm okay, Lord. Like you the one said it, so if it does flop, like, did you flop? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, yeah. I feel like he's the one that said it. And so, you know, sometimes the Lord puts you in a situation where you just got to do it. You ain't going to know. You, there ain't no. There's no way. You, how you going to know? There ain't no metrics. There's no way for you to know, fam. There's no way for you to know. So I'm just telling you what he's saying to me. Yeah. And um, I'm not listening to that all day and all that kind of stuff. And I know how to pray and all of that. But I'm telling you, man, right now, it's. He, 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 I have to glory in my weakness. <laughs> well, dude, I've been feeling like the insecurity. I've been feeling the fear. I feel like I'm a burden to people. I feel like I'm an annoyance to people. Mm. Like that's how the enemy has been coming against me. Mm. And in the same way, dude, like my temptation is to go look at porn, mm -hmm. masturbate. Um, I've, I've battled that by giving myself something I didn't have in my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I started collecting comic books. That's so good. It's not good for my bank account, but it's good. <laughs> but like, that's what I'm turning to. Yeah, like, for sure. And so like, I'm, I'm giving, and it's, uh, to me, it's awoke, it's awoken like this innocence of my childhood. That's beautiful. And like, I've loved the journey in it. Yep. But dude, like, that's the lie that I keep hearing in my head is like, you are too much for people. Yep. Uh, shut your mouth. Like, yep. that's how it's trying to get me to isolate. Yep. Um, and I've let it, I've yep. let it, uh, even in our text messages, guys, like I, I'll say it right now, like I, I haven't been communicating mm. often mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm a burden to you guys. Mm. And that's just something that I'm navigating literally like point blank right here. Yep. Um, just giving like a GPS ping on it. No, I love it. And so how do you, cause you said something, this is why I wanted to bring this up. You said, I know how to pray and I know how to battle this. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So well, well, I would love to hear. Well, you're doing it right now, though. Okay. Right. That part of it is doing doing it right now. Yeah. The on, the only thing that you have. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. So let's go back to the garden. Yeah. Uh, Genesis three. Yeah. The serpent. Did did not God say that you shouldn't eat of every tree? Mm. Right. Yeah. And then Eve's like, well. I guess, I mean, and then, right, that whole conversation. Let me tell you how the conversation should have gone, right? Satan still does what he does, right? Yeah. And then Eve is like, really? Well, let's ask him. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. We assume too much. We'd all be butt naked right now. Wow. Think about it. Think about it. S Serpent comes to Eve and says, hey, yeah. Did, did he not say that you should not eat of every tree? Yeah. Eve's response is, well, let's just ask him real quick. Satan screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daddy. Oh, you're going to fact check. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. The serpent said that, that you said that we should not eat of every tree. Can you tell us again? Mm. It's over for him. Right? So when you're having that thought that I'm being a burden, well, why don't you just ask him? That's good. If the lie is, I, I don't want to be a burden to the team, ask us. Yeah. We'll let you know if you're a burden. Yeah. I have no problem telling you if you if you ever burden me, Sammy, yeah. I promise you, I will have zero problem telling you you're on my damn nerves. Yeah. I will say it to you in a heartbeat. Yeah. In love, though. For sure. <laughs> right? For but sure. I'll be like, okay, you can stop now. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So when those lies come, challenge the lie. Oh, that's good. Because it don't sound like his voice. No. So just challenge the lie. That's good. 
Uh, Tim, first, I just want to say I love you. I love you, too. And uh, uh, we have one of our interns here, William. We love you, sir. Uh, could you help me pass those out, sir? <laughs> um, not a signing out. So, <laughs> Tim... And, and don't open it yet. I'm just going to give a, a brief update, but you can read it, and you can actually go ahead and read it out loud what that says on there. Severance for... Tim Ross, Severance for Christ? This is an envelope? Mine says from Christ King. I didn't know... I so know. I just want to say that I love you guys, and the fact that we're on this topic is almost hilarious. In there, you're going to find from all of our dwellers a bunch of encouragement, and the question was, what is your favorite thing about Tim... Sam and Julie. There's no way I'm doing I didn't this know right y'all were gonna talk about this no, today. I'm not doing this. This is right from now. our dwellers. This morning I asked them, send encouragement. Mm -mm. And the question was very simple and wholesome. What is your favorite thing about Tim? What is your favorite thing about Sam? What is your favorite thing about Julie? I didn't know God wanted to do this today. So I love you guys and the dwellers love y'all so much. And those are fresh from this morning. I picked those up at CVS before I came here. I can't with this right now. Mm. I am not doing this with you today, bro. <laughs> I love you guys. And they love you. Dwellers are going crazy. I can't, I can't continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll literally start bawling right now. just wanted to wreck the whole pod. <laughs> <laughs> no, God knew what he God knew what he was doing. Right. Oh, this is going to be a sucky pot mm -hmm. if, if I'm just sitting in silence. Uh, all right. Well, this, these are y'all are my people, so I guess we're just going to. I can't read these out loud. I won't get through them. Uh, what I'll say is, uh, whew, man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> God, these are killing me <laughs> in the best way, dude. Like, I can literally feel my heart just getting lighter reading these and it's uh there's absolutely no way bro you got away with words that's i didn't know how to feel that like <sighs> your 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 heart getting lighter that's exactly it like i'm reading them and my heart yes. is getting lighter Mm. I don't need no tissue. Mm -mm, got I'm, beards just, for that. I'm just going to water my beard. <laughs> I don't we care. got beards for that. This ain't going to be a good pod, <laughs> especially for our Spotify and our... <laughs> it's just radio silence. And our... Uh, no. It's just... Oh, God. <laughs> hmm.
for the people who are just getting in the live, uh, the context to all of this is um, Tim and Sam were sharing about some struggles they're having right now in in their heart and their mental health with everything going on. And I just felt the Holy Spirit today tell me, ask on Instagram. First, kick off Tim and Julie from their Instagram accounts. They're not allowed to use it. So I got the green light from that. And I asked everybody on IG stories, what's your favorite thing about Tim? What's your favorite thing about Sam? And what's your favorite thing about Julie? And I screenshotted all of those before 9 a.m., sent them to CVS, got it printed out. And little did we know that uh, our dwellers were here today by the Holy Spirit to encourage, encourage the team in the season. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for helping me do this. No, this was timely, honestly, dude. Honestly. Oh, man. And, and yeah, you're right, dude. Like, we were just sit, literally sitting here confessing the lies that we've been hearing, and you had a pocket full of truth just waiting mm-hmm. and getting other people's perspectives on things. Um, and seeing the common threads, that's that's what's wrecked me is how many people say and it's and it's it's the thing that the enemy attacks the most. Like thinking I'm a burden, thinking I'm a annoyance, and people talking about the authenticity and the vulnerability. And a lot of a lot of these were about men not feeling like they could be emotional like that that's what has me completely wrecked um i'm just taking the time to uh no, good, breathe all this in because there's just zero way that this is a coincidence i appreciate you being Love you, bro. led by the spirit and uh Words of affirmation is my love language. Mm. And uh, I think I've just allowed uh, too many non affirming words in Mm. the last few months. So this is very kind. The image that's hit my head for you, Tim, is like you've been you've been come against with words, and you've you've kind of gotten the body posture of like, oh, you want to fight? Let's fight. And this to me is someone coming and giving you a hug, and breaking that down, and saying like, no, this isn't a time to fight. It's time to love. Chat's just filling with hearts, by the way. Lord have mercy. <laughs> it is with loving kindness that he draws us. Yep. Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. Woo. Well, I think we just proved that this community is not one sided. Yep. It is not just what I give you, it's what you give us. And uh, 
I wasn't even smart enough to pray for that. Mm. Lord, have mercy on my soul. (laughs) I was not smart enough to pray for that. Thank you, Hector. Love you, dude. I love you, bro. Now, Huli, make sure everybody does the same thing for Hector. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. (laughs) You're not going to let him slip by. Yeah, we ain't going to let you do all Mm -hmm. that. Nah, dude, don't worry. I already got your your debit card attached to my Apple Apple Cash. So oh. I, I bought like 14 apps today. You're straight. <laughs> You're straight. Buy 14 more. They're free. <laughs> and they're free. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay, people. <laughs> he loves us. What are we even talking about? Ooh. Okay, Jesus. You were talking about fact checking, going back and listening to the voice of truth, literally. Yeah, right? Like, if, if you start hearing a lie, hmm. let's go ask my dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hear the enemy start telling you, you God don't love you, yeah. and you shouldn't even be in community. And Let's go ask my dad real quick. Yeah. Let's see what he says. If he repeats what you repeat, then you will be telling the truth, which is something you can't do because you are the father of lies. Mm. <laughs> mm. Ooh, Jesus is, when I tell you he's too kind, I cannot deal with his kindness. Dude is too kind. I can't deal with it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something. Those words are better than a Rolls Royce, it's better than a mansion, it's better than a private jet, it's better than, I don't know, what, what do people like? They just be liking stuff. I don't know what, what it is. Money. Yeah. Australian Shepherds. Australian Shepherds? <laughs> like the dog? The little, ca- the, the little sheep dog? It's a ni- niche. <laughs> it's very specific, bro. I, I'm not even, <laughs> never seen an Australian Shepherd. Are you serious? It's a phenomenal You've dog. You've never seen an Australian Shepherd? I'm so sorry. Have you seen a okay? Uh, have you seen a corgi? Maybe a corgi. Hey, bro, I don't know dogs, but like that. It's all right. They're they're just yeah, dogs. Much. Chihuahua. Is that what a corgi is? No, I'm just saying like we could. We, uh, you know, a Chihuahua. You know, Chihuahuas and pit bulls. We know those. Yeah. And German shepherds. I just have never seen an Australian shepherd. Yeah. What them fools be doing? They nip at the ankles of sheep. You know, uh, they hurt them. They're little farm dogs. I'm going to stop talking about dogs now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Sarah McLaughlin song I can play and play like a slideshow for this, actually. <laughs> We're just going to <laughs> jump live to Australian Shepherds <laughs> on YouTube right now. We got Gary in the field. Gary, why don't you give us an update? Who's Gary? We oh, got, you didn't know? We, we hired him. We he, he's him. in Australia. We have your debit card, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Christ King is confirmed dead up y'all, there too. Y'all still have the debit card? <laughs> Yo, I love it. Oh man. That is so mm. funny to Ruby, me. Ruby Ruby just sent us $20 and said beautiful silent moments. It was beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was beautiful. That's what I love about the basement, dude. Like I needed I, that. People, I'm, I don't care. People wouldn't be comfortable doing that. Well, y- you know, or or you know that that would happen and you know, you say some type of trite Thank you, and mm-hmm. hey, appreciate that, guys, and throw Jesus glitter on it, right? No, but the prayers of the saints availeth much. Yeah. If you guys just pray for me that the enemy wouldn't have it, then we start making all these general things, and <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'd rather, again, I'd rather be known, brings us full circle. Yes, sir. I'd rather be known for who I am top to bottom, and then you can, then you can go, you know what, I think I want to rock with that guy. You know what I love? I mean, honestly, I didn't try to step into 2023 after being a pastor for seven years. I didn't try to step into 2023 with controversy, right? That wasn't my intent. Like, that's not even what upset means in 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 the upset the world business. Upset literally means to turn over. That's what it means. It means to turn upside down. doesn't mean to piss off. It doesn't mean to frustrate. So I didn't step into 2023 
you know, hoping to piss people off. And, mm-hmm. and, um, I'm glad everything played out the way it did. Because those responses mm-hmm. are from people that have seen all sides of me this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've been on the journey the entire time. They've seen all sides of me. Mm-hmm. And they still speak that type of life. Yeah. Like, I'd rather be known for all of that, and then you can say that, yeah. as opposed to just, amen, saints. How am I going to treat my house like I treat a pulpit? Mm. Tell me. No. Por qué? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why would I do that? <laughs> You can't treat your house like you treat a pulpit. Mm-hmm. But when you do, that's how you wind up in a hotel room with a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Looking for a home. You turn into Samson. Mm-hmm. And because you have no place to lay your head, mm-hmm. you find Delilah's lap. Mm. Y'all ain't gonna run me out of my own house from being human. Yeah, dude. A believer! And human. You're not gonna run me out of my own house. Loving God and being human at the same time. I don't know what you I don't know what you expect. I don't know if you gotta fake it in your own house. If you pray all day and all night in your house, yay you. But at the end of, but I, I gotta talk about bills with my family. I gotta talk about life with my boys. I gotta I'm raising two teenagers. Noah is thirteen. As of the seventeenth of October, <laughs> I, I got to talk about I got to talk about life and sex and girls, and yep. we got to talk about money, and we got to talk about we got to th- talk about people paying money to find our address and our phone numbers to send us text messages. Yeah. We got, I got to talk about all that. Yeah. Watch and pray, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got and we sit down and we hold space for people. Not one Bible verse in, in, in any of those encouraging words. Wow. Wow. Not a one. Wow. And guess what? Didn't need one. Didn't. I just needed to be encouraged. I needed somebody to put some courage into me. I've been up since 4.30 this morning. I had my quiet time. I had my prayer time. And guess what? All of that didn't give me what those comments just gave me. And I don't have a hole in my heart, so I can hold that. Mm. I don't need it every single Monday. Heck, do you got any more cards? <laughs> <laughs> anybody anybody encouraging me today? <laughs> hey, Hector. I need, I need, I need. Can you can you get on my IG live again and see see who still likes me? Brothers relapsing. I just, I just, <laughs> it's been a it's been a long it's been weekend. A, it's dude. been a long weekend, man. You 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 got any more of them comments? I got that good, good. I, I need to freebase some more of them comments. Uh-huh. They said it's gonna be about twenty dollars this time, well, man. That snow hitter. First one is First free. free. First one's free. <laughs> now that I got you hooked. Yeah, not that. <laughs> somebody said not that itch and twitch. <laughs> so so no, nah, I, I I don't have a hole in my soul. So I can hold this. This is going to carry me all the way to 2024. I appreciate y'all. Mm. Dwell is stand go. up. I love y'all so much. Thank Let's you. Go. Thank you for encouraging your boy. I, I'm telling you, I didn't even know I needed it. I didn't I didn't pray this morning, God, if you could just <laughs> somehow wait, some way, give me a sign. All I know is after I finish my devotion time and <laughs> writing my threads, I get a text from Hector. I need you and Huli to stay off of your, <laughs> stay off of IG. I was like, "What the hell did we do?" Just get out. I didn't post nothing. I wasn't looking at booty cheeks, Hector. Everybody sees my Instagram. Like all of y'all see it. What did I, what did I do? I haven't followed anybody ratchet. I don't think the person at CVS because they have to look. I didn't know they do this. So when you send in your photos, they have to look at it to make sure nothing's inappropriate, right? Oh. So, Soon as he get, he hands it over to me. He said, "Is it Tim's birthday?" <laughs> and I was like, "He knew him." I was like, "Wait, I don't. I, I feel like he knew. He did, he did not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't over communicate that he knew you. But he's like, yeah. hey, is it Tim's birthday?'" I was like, "No. What you mean?'" He's like, "It's just really positive." I just had to make wow. sure there were. I just had to make sure there was no nudity in here. Yeah, yeah. But freak, everything in here was so positive. So he wondered. He was wondering if it was your birthday. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. It's like a birthday. It is like a birthday. 
Um, and I appreciate it. So, no, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. It's so sweet. Just sweet. The Lord's just sweet, man. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. He's just very kind. Th- thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hector. Thank you, dwellers. So good. <sighs> what do we want to talk about today? Well, we got lots of questions uh, in the emails. We got questions that are coming through in the chat. This is what I love about Mondays. Mm -hmm. This is what I love about Mondays. This is what I love about Mondays. This is what I love about Mondays. Let's get it. All right, cool. So I got one from Gabriel Demazi. Gabriel from North Carolina. Good afternoon, Tim and Basement Crew. You guys have changed my life and how I go about my relationships with people for the better, and the fruit has been amazing. I'm 24 years old, saved at 22. Mm. I am currently uh, in a deployed environment in Germany, mm. and I am leading a Bible study every week. In doing so, has opened myself up to, uh, to other soldiers being very vulnerable with me. As I have been receiving their vulnerability, I find myself feeling heartbroken at times when I watch young believers trip and fall. I'm doing my best to remain positive and hand uh, hand this way to Christ, uh, Jesus, and focus on his yoke. Do you have any advice for someone who is in a season away from home mm-hmm. who feels they are trying to sow seeds of grace, love, and joy from the gospel, but they are sowing on an, on a famine-plagued island? Mm. Thank you so much for your time and your assignment. I love each of you dearly and always keep you and your families in my prayers. So dope. So, first of all, uh, thank you for your service to our country uh, while you are away. Um, and I, 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 I can identify with, with, with what you're holding. You're holding the tension of... Um, uh, I love when that doorbell rings. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. Um, you're holding the tension of the... passion you have to give to give these young men and women you know love and truth and grace and you got to watch them walk away (laughs) and see how difficult it is for them to live that out um I, i got indoctrinated into this very very quickly when i was a young adult pastor prior i was just an evangelist itinerant speaker and so i never had to walk with people through life I preached mm. and I left. Mm. Um, but when I became a young adult pastor, and then, of course, subsequently um, a campus pastor and then a lead pastor for seven years, um, he, he, here's the perspective that I want to give you. When, when, I, when I teach a message on the... I, I'm going to talk like when I was a pastor. Um, when I taught a message on Sunday, I didn't expect to see any fruit from that uh, message that I spoke for 90 to 120 days. Mm. And um, what, what most preachers want to see is instant change mm-hmm. because they've convinced themselves that they actually have a life-changing word <laughs> mm. as opposed to preaching from a life-changing book. God's words are life-changing, not mine. I'm just a messenger. And so Paul talks about the foolishness of preaching because Preaching is so foolish that it shouldn't even work. There's no way that somebody should get up and talk about the invisible man and then people give their life to them. Shouldn't happen, right? So the fact that it does happen lets you know that there's something bigger going on. The Holy Spirit is actually drawing people to Jesus. And I want to make sure that that's clear. The Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus. I have never led anybody to Jesus. I've preached a message, but the Holy Spirit draws, actually leads people to Jesus. That's good. He does that. I don't do that. Can't do it. Right. So I preach the gospel. I talk about the gospel. And if somebody gives their life to Jesus because the Holy Spirit drew them, if somebody stops a sinful behavior, it's because the Holy Spirit convicted them. It's not because I convinced them, because if I could convince you out of something, somebody else can convince you into it. If I could debate you out of something, somebody else can debate you into it. So this is the reason why I don't debate. I stand on the truth of God's word. And after that, It is what it is, right? I've said what I said. Um, uh, But I look at preaching or teaching or even doing the Bible study like you're doing it, I see it as sowing seed. So you sow a seed, and then you water the seed, and then at some point there's going to be a harvest. You are not in charge of the harvest. God himself is the Lord of the harvest. He is the one 
that literally brings us to the place that we need to be. He is the one that brings us to fruition, right? So Paul says that one sows a seed, another waters, and it's God that gets the increase. That is, the, that is it. It is, it is a seed time, there is irrigation, and there is harvest. And if you allow the seed to go in and then the water to happen, there's going to be a harvest. Now, sometimes we're sowing seed and sometimes we're doing irrigation. I, I think what, what the church has done is that there, there's this romantic um, asphyxiation that we have, um, or, or I, say, I should say a romantic, fixa a romantic fixation that we have with the harvest. We think every encounter should lead to a soul being saved. Mm. When sometimes the encounter is just a seed being sown. Sometimes the encounter is simply uh, uh, the seed being watered. And then sometimes that person is coming to Jesus and then we're all having a big old party. And that's beautiful. I love it. I can't wait. I, I love those moments. But when you're talking about doing a Bible study week in and week out, you are gonna be you're gonna be giving people the word. They're gonna go outside and still go to the club. They're gonna walk right out and still have premarital sex. They're gonna walk right out and still uh, have low self-esteem and still uh, have unforgiveness in their heart and still be bitter and still be petty and still be all of these things because the word is working. It is working on a person. And I don't want you to feel frustrated that you don't see the work happen as soon as you said it. Mm -hmm. That would be as foolish as putting a seed in the ground today and being mad that you don't have a harvest tonight. Seed time, irrigation, and harvest. These are three different stages, and I hope that helps. That brings a new perspective to the term living word. It is a living word. The word needs to live. It yes. It's time to develop. Like, oh, that's so good. Tim. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to it's gotta play out. Mm -hmm. It's got to play out, and you have to have patience. That, got, that's, why, that's why Jesus uses so much agriculture, agricultural terminology, yep. because that's literally how it plays out. Yeah. The wheat grows with the tear. You don't you don't pull up the uh you don't pull up the wheat and the tear when it's growing because the weeds look exactly like the wheat when they first start growing. Wow. So you have to wait until it matures and fully grows, then you can separate wow. the wheat from the tear. But a lot of times we're looking at something while it's still growing and judging it already. So something's sprouting up and you're like, that's tear. Rip it up. And it's like, that was wheat. Give it time. Now, now they're deconstructing faith. Mm. You kicked them out of church while they were still growing. Whoops. That person was just simply asking a question, Pastor. Nobody was trying to subvert your authority right. in your little 75-member kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Sick of it. Danny says, uh, can you please speak on, the gr on growing up with a Jesus is coming back soon. You better be ready or you're going to hell and it being more like a fear than a good thing and how to get out of that mindset. Uh, Jesus is coming back soon. He's been coming back for 2,000 years. Now, I'm a literalist, mm -hmm. so I'm the wrong person to ask this question, <laughs> right? Jesus is coming back individually, and at some point he's coming back corporately. The Bible says that. Mm -hmm. But people, people keep waiting for the end, the end, the end. My brother was taken September 17th of 2004. It's appointed unto man once to die, and then after that, the judgment. Right? So everybody's going to die. Yeah. So you're going to meet him now, you're going to meet him later, but you're going to meet him. So what, what I think he's trying to get at is the, what I would refer to as the fear mongering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of those that are like, he's coming back soon. Yeah. Well, that, okay, so so I think I've told this story before, but. If you hang out with me long enough, you're going to hear every story I've ever said <laughs> 52 times or more. So uh, I had an uncle who scared everybody into giving their life to Jesus. There's only one problem with that tactic. God has not given us the spirit of fear. For if you, so if you get scared into something, how do you, how do you keep them? Keep them scared. You got to keep them scared. Right, so if 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 your if your uh, preaching is you're gonna bust hell wide open, there's a bullet with your name on it. You can wind up in a car accident today. 
You can get hit by a bus when you cross the street. Well, then guess what's going to happen when you... <laughs> guess what's going to happen after about a month when you're still alive? Mm. I think I'm good. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, so, so he tried to scare us into the kingdom. It didn't work because... And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm so sorry. Like, I don't think there's a bullet with my name on it. I don't think I have enough beef with anybody for them to write my name on a bullet. So, so um, I think one of the ways that we get out of that mindset mm -hmm. is to understand that, oh, okay, Holy Spirit. I, let me give you Bible. That way you can, you can rest in Scripture. So this is Acts. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Echos. Echos. Uh, capitulo. Mm -hmm. Si, capitulo uno. Acts chapter number one. Uh, verses six and seven. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, Jesus replied, the father alone has the authority to set those, time, those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. <laughs> so, so let me tell you, anybody that puts a date on when Jesus coming back, I can guarantee you he not coming back on that day. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you ever want to know what day Jesus is not coming back, put a date on it. I double dare you to say it's November 22nd. <laughs> Make flyers, put up billboards. Here's what you just guaranteed. He ain't gonna, he not going to let you be right. He said, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. It's just too easy. Así que mientras los apóstoles estaban con Jesús, le preguntarán con insistencia. Sí, uh, señor, ha llegado ya el tiempo de que libres a Israel y restauras uh, restures uh, uh, nuestro reino? Es les contesto, solo el Padre tiene la autoridad para fijar es esas fechas y tiempos y a ustedes no les corresponde saberlo. Mm. Okay, too. Aha. I'm out here. Ay, puppy. I'm out here. I'm out here. Though. Come on now, brother. I'm doing something. Send me the border jumper. Just, Amen. Just don't, <laughs> just don't ask me to do it without this Bible in my hand. I'm not going to be able to do it. But I'm, I bet you one day, one day, one day I'm going to be on it. <laughs> Somebody, Keisha said, I don't know what he said, but he said it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the funniest response. Somebody said W Spanish. W Spanish, w let's Spanish. go. Yeah, let's go. Do, doble or doble? Doble, doble Espanol, See. Sí. So uh, do you remember when they, uh, in 2012, they legitimately predicted that that would be the end of the world and they made like a whole movie about it? Mm -hmm. Like a whole movie. People are really about this conspiracy life. Yeah. So here's my question, Tim. You're saying that we can't start a conspiracy podcast about the end times. Is that, would you, right? Did you want to start one? <laughs> not saying that I have one, not saying that I desire to do one, but you know, some people like to really break this down and get into the conspiratorial world. Would you say that that is a waste of energy and time? It is a waste of energy and time. Scripture says, occupy till he comes. Why don't you go do something? <laughs> Instead of sitting up telling people to buy granola bars from Costco <laughs> and wait for the trumpet to blast. Let's mm. go upset the world. Yeah, dude. Go ye out 
and make disciples of all nations. We ain't got time for that. Mm-hmm. You got people dying in Israel right now. You got people dying in, in on the Gaza Strip right now. And you worried about a day he's coming back? <laughs> what are we talking about? It's good. Burying that talent. And 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 he's close. Oh, and and then some else come out. Well, you know, uh, this could stall. And <laughs> I can't do it. Keep going. I, I'm, Please keep going. No, 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 no. Because I'll role play the whole. No, person. we could, we could do some improv. <laughs> no, let's get it. I just, I just, I, I, I'm. I love. I love. You know, I come from the old school church that reminded us that he was coming back. Like, that needs to be in the forefront of your mind. Mm-hmm. But but that gives you hope. That's not to, that's not to uh, turn you into somebody who's just living in fear every day. Absolutely. That should give you hope that no matter how bad you see humanity deteriorating, he is coming back. And we don't have to rely on a prime minister. We don't have to rely on a president. We don't have to rely on any diplomatic official. There is a king coming back whose reign will be eternal. Until such time, I will be found upsetting the world with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. Not sitting in the house talking about the earthquake that happened in Afghanistan is because of the sins of the nation. How convenient. (laughs) And the hurricanes that ripped through Florida is because of the sins of Florida. How convenient. That that hurricane only goes past where all hurricanes go. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, ain't God just convenient? <laughs> he just a judge in those cities that just happen to be where all the hurricanes and earthquakes. God is judging uh, uh, California. That's why those earthquakes keep happening. Is that why the earthquakes keep happening? <laughs> or is it the San Andreas fault? Huh. Is it the people's fault or the Andreas's fault? <laughs> Whose fault is it? And how come nobody's dealing with all the perversion in the South? Yeah. Ain't no twisters coming for the Southern Baptist Convention, I don't suppose. So a conspiracy podcast is definitely off the table. I'm just trying to, I'm just, before we start saying that natural disasters is the Lord judging people, yeah. I'm pretty sure all that judgment went on the broken body of his son while it was on that cross. What we are dealing with is a broken world and the natural disasters that we have contributed to. No matter where you where where you fall on the line philosophically of global warming or we can't say that we've been doing a got a good job taking care of the planet. When you got little fish out here choking on plastic. That's all I got on that. Let's see. We got one here from fifteen hundred. Oh in the my chat. God! Woo-hoo. Not the heart attack. <laughs> fifteen hundred in the chat. I thought he was in trouble. <laughs> Heath Blair, you like them geological jokes? <laughs> I love you, Lord. I'm well read, Heath. <laughs> what are we talking about now? All right, we got Jody uh, on the email. I have been sick with uh, many chronic illnesses since two thousand. My doctors. Uh, my doctors are currently testing for yet another condition. I gave my life to Jesus back in 2000 when an illness almost took me out. It's hard sometimes not to question the why. I tr- I do trust God. I just wish I understood if uh, he allows this to happen over and over again um, or is all the sickness from the devil. Mm. Mm. What's the name again? Jody. Jody. Um I first just want to tell you that I love you and I want to tell you how heartbroken I am that you've had one infirmity after the other. I cannot imagine the toll it's taken on your body. I cannot imagine the toll that it's taken on your emotional capacity. I cannot imagine um, the toll that it's taken on your faith. 
um, when, when we have sustained um, illnesses, it is very, very common. So I want you to know mm-hmm. there is nothing wrong with you mm-hmm. to be yeah. questioning Absolutely. God about why your illnesses have been stacking up like this. Um, we believe in healing. We pray for healing. We stand on God's word. And sometimes things don't happen the way we want it to. And it's easy to begin to question, did I do something wrong? Um, Am I in some type of sin? Um, Is this an attack of the enemy? I've done everything that I can. I've gone to multiple doctors. I've been waiting for this breakthrough. It hasn't happened yet. What's wrong with me? Um, I just want to let you know that you are loved. You are righteous. You are a child of God. And for whatever reason um, that these health maladies persist, um, I just want you to know that you have my prayers and you have the prayers of this community as you navigate this. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil for thou art with you. I'm praying that thy rod, his rod and his staff comfort you. Because I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't have enough information to even broach it. I just want to communicate my care my concern, my compassion, um, and the conflict I have. It is frustrating. Um, I pray that you get the answers you need, and I pray that healing is yours sooner than later. Yeah. Um, but I know what it is to question. Uh, I've, I've, I've wrestled for years with God's, God's, see how I'm even framing this, God's seeming track record with cancer I just don't I, I've lost too many people to cancer mm-hmm. after praying and believing God and putting extra virgin olive oil on their head and their feet and they drinking it and we doing everything that we know to do as believers and they still go through all the stages and die mm-hmm. um, I was I was very bitter during that time, and I questioned God a lot. And um, to resign myself to his sovereignty seemed um, dismissive to the people that I loved. And um, I had to do it anyway, because there, there's just some stuff on, on this side of eternity. We're just not going to know. Point blank, period. And so I don't believe... Um, that I need to have the answer to everything. I surely don't have the answer for you today. I really don't. Um, but my prayers are with you, and I'm I'm. I can feel your frustration, and I'm as frustrated as you are. Mm-hmm. It makes me angry that you've been dealing with this for three years. It makes me very angry, and I would be very tired as well. My 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 hope and my prayer is that. Um, no matter how long this persists, that your faith faileth not. Hmm. Don't let your your faith fail. Even in these conditions, do not let your faith fail. That's my encouragement to you. It's been three years. It is tiring. It is exhausting. It's too many doctor's visits. I agree with you. It's too many appointments. I absolutely agree with you. It's too much medication. I absolutely agree with Mm. you. It's too many sleepless nights. It's too much discomfort. I agree with you on all of it. But don't let your faith fail. Do not let your faith fail. I wanted to hear your your thoughts kind of still going down this, this route of I pray but God isn't, you know, the genie in the lamp. 
He's not. I was listening to worship music this morning, and I haven't listened to worship in a while. And I was wondering, like, I felt a little convicted about that. But Holy Spirit just downloaded it to me. Like, I stopped listening to worship for so long because every time I heard it, it would trigger me anytime I was in the car. Because when I was going through the loss of my baby and then losing my aunt this year, it was in the car where I'm blasting worship and I'm praying, God, please do it. Please show up. I'm singing like my guts out to the worship songs, right? And then aunt died, baby died. So I didn't I didn't have verbiage to it until you like started talking about it and, I, and the Holy Spirit's revealing it to me. Um, man, there's so many times, and this is just an like encouragement, but I do want to hear your thoughts on, there's so many times that we pray and ask and we don't get what we want. So I just wanted to to hear from you it's funny on the other side when you come from it, you feel you can become more intimate with the Lord and feel closer to him. What is that? Because you pray and you pray and you pray, you hate God, but then you get to the other side. And for whatever reason, you feel closer to the Lord when you've, when you've allowed healing. Is that his desire? What is, what it, is all of that? It's the nature of relationships. You are never going to get everything that you want, not even from a human. So the expectation that you would get it from God is just a miss already, right? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ prays three times in the garden if there's any other way <laughs> yeah. for this to happen without me going to the cross. Now, mind you, this is God in the flesh. Scripture says he was crucified before the foundations of the world. So he had already committed to doing this. Yeah. And he praying for it not to happen and then invited his disciples to pray too, to pray a prayer that they that could not be answered. Wow. For the sake of all humanity, this these prayer couldn't be answered. He wanted them to pray it anyway. Wow. And he prays three times and it doesn't happen. So before we think that Jesus can't understand what it is to not get a prayer answered, mm. may we be reminded. That his prayer didn't get answered. Perhaps this is the reason why he answers Paul's prayer in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I prayed three times for this thorn to be removed. Who answers him? Not Michael the archangel, not Gabriel the messenger. Mm. Paul, uh, Jesus himself says, let me, go, let me go answer. I can go. I know what he's dealing with. Dealt with the same thing. So um, Jesus was literally touched in all points yet without sin. Right. So we. I can't tell you how many times in the 27 and a half years I've been a believer in Jesus, I've had something said and or done that I wanted God to fix or a situation happened that I wanted him to intervene. And it didn't happen. And he's either Lord or he's not. Yeah. <laughs> If it's contingent on him answering what I want, my, 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 first of all, my perspective is too limited to ever say what I can and cannot handle or what I do and do not want. I know what I think at the time, but I don't know what to do with all that. So that's the, that's my mindset on it. Yeah. Is I've rested in the fact that he is, he is Lord of my life even when it makes no sense in my life. It's a full surrender. It is. And at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's what marriage is. <laughs> but this is, why, this is why Paul says that marriage is an illustration of Christ and his bride. It's, it's just the, that's where you can find it in its totality. You can find it in community if you're not married. I'm telling you, if you marry, you know for a fact you ain't getting everything you want. <laughs> Point blank, period. I don't know. It's, uh, that there ain't. You, you, you can think it's going to go one way. I bet you it don't. <laughs> for a variety of reasons. And that's just a human being. So. Uh, we got one from uh, 
Taurine. I hope I'm saying that right. Taurine Smith, Tim, Hector, Sammy, Julie, and all the dwellers. I hope and pray you guys are doing well. Quick question. How do you know when it's time to move on from your current job slash career? For such a long time, I felt something deeper with uh, within me yearning for something else, and I'm not quite sure what that is. I was having uh, some trouble discerning whether that was me being bored and doing the same Monday through Friday routine, feeling like there's no purpose, or whether it's the Holy Spirit telling me to move on. And when I begin to think about the next thing, everything goes blank. Help a brother out. Thanks, family. Love you guys. All right. I might be the wrong qu- right, wrong person to ask this question. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I like how you set it up. <laughs> I, I really am. I'm the wrong person to ask this question. And the reason why I am mm-hmm. um, is because... Uh, now, trigger alert, this might cause some people some consternation, okay? I, I, I believe our steps are ordered by the Lord. And uh, Proverbs 16, 9 says that we make our own plans, but the Lord is the one that determines our steps. I just added is the one. The, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. That's the, that's the verse in NLT, okay? Um, uh, along with that... Um, my, my my mentor prayed this prayer over us last week when we were in Delaware. He said, God, uh, order Tim's steps and order his stops. Ooh. Ooh. That's exactly how it hit me. Don't just order Tim's steps, order Tim's stops. Huh. So if he's the God of my steps and my stops, but I don't take no steps, how am I going to know when to stop? If you feel in the kind of way about your job, Mm-hmm. Make a move. Yep. Woo. Yep. And if it don't work out, stop. <laughs> yep. I just don't know how you're going to figure out anything if you ain't moving. Right. Do something. Right. Abram had to leave to find Canaan. Yep. God wasn't about to download the directions. And then he's like, Sarah, I'm still waiting on a word from the Lord. Now I heard move. Yeah. But he didn't say where yet. And I don't want to mess nothing up. So he packed up. Mm hmm. So you got to pack up and you got to move. Yeah. Right? And you he sounds single. So your 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 risk is already mitigated. <laughs> it's a little yeah. easier. It's a little to make easier a move. to 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 move around. Yeah. But but I'm I'm just not afraid of making a mistake. Too many people mm-hmm. That's what it is. They're too afraid to make a mistake and the righteous shall fall 7 times. Yeah. The righteous <laughs> may stumble 7 times. Right? Um but the Lord is there. Yeah. And so you got to just shoot your shot. That's what's happening with this app. I feel like the Lord told us to do it. We're going to find out. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think it's way too much warfare for it to be a fluke. I just think the enemy's nervous about something. Mm-hmm. He is the prince of the power of the air, and we're doing something that has to do with media and the airwaves. And so maybe that's why the attack is a little bit stronger than what it normally would be. But what are we going to do? We got to get out here and try something. So so I just feel like um, taking a step faith is a part of this. I said a step faith. Taking a faith step is a part of what we do as believers. And um, sometimes you don't know until you do it. And you have time. You're, you're not going to ruin your whole life uh, taking a step. If you've prayed about it and you still feel like, man, I just really feel like my season's up at this job and I feel like I need a change of pace, then you're going to have to do something before the Lord reveals the next thing. It's not going to come to you while you're there. I remember when I was about to transition from, uh, I was working at Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation. Uh, I was I was um, a customer service representative and a motivational speaker for the corp- for the organization. And I felt like it was time to transition to do um ministry full-time and I, I was with my best friend Corey, and we were at his friend's house so this is i say that on purpose this was my friend Corey's friend my best friend Corey's friend this was not my friend but i was over this guy's house and um i was telling him about you know the move and this is how i said it i said i feel like my seasons at at at, at uh nissan is coming to an end but I'm waiting until I build up engagement on the on, on the itinerant speaking side. And once I have like three months of engagements, then I'll make my move. I was newly married. 
We didn't have any kids, but I felt like that was the right thing to do. And this dude that I don't know looks me right in my eyes and he said, God is offended with your faith. Mm. I looked at that man like, I don't know you. <laughs> I was so heated when he said that. Yeah. He said, he said, God is offended with your faith. And I'm looking at him like, mm -hmm. go on. Because I'm in his house too. Cause I'm, so I'm yeah. like, yeah. I didn't want to have to go ham on him in his own house, right? I'm in this man's house, right? So he goes, um, can you believe Corey's calling me right now? <laughs> Whoa. Hold on real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love lies. Corey. <laughs> Miller? Miller, I am live. This is scary. I am live. I'm doing, my, I'm doing the um, YouTube live right now, right? What we got like 1,500 people in the chat or something 1600, like that? 1,677. We got 1,600 people in the chat right now. I literally said your name 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Miller, I'm telling the story about when I was about to transition from um, from Nissan. And we were at, I'm not going to say his name, but we were at Dude's house. And, and he told me that he, after I told him, like, I'm waiting until I get enough engagements before I transition, he was like, God is offended with your faith. And I'm looking at him like, bro, I'm in your house, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to talk reckless. But then I'm looking at you like, bro, get your friend. <laughs> I know you remember this. <laughs> so, so, so I'm literally telling the story right now, and then you call. <laughs> Thank you, Miller. I love you, too. Thank you. Okay, I will. I love you. Okay, bye. That's Corey Miller, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have him on the pod at some point. That's, but that's my best friend. All right. What's this? Okay, sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Okay. Um, great. So um, uh, he tells me that God is offended with my faith. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe Corey Carl when I'm telling that story. I mean, you you just cannot. That's just surreal. Holy Spirit's been on this podcast all day. And when I tell you, Bruh. he's hovering. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So so um. So, so he the guy says I'm offended with your God is offended with your faith, and I was like, no, I'm just being responsible. That's mm. that's how I'm, I'm just being responsible, and I'm married, and I want to get the engagements up first, and I'm not going to be living in the back of my car. You, you know, talking about it's the Lord and I'm married and all that kind of stuff. And he said, okay. He was so nonchalant. He said, okay, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to get no engagements until you leave your job. Uh -oh. And do you know that's exactly what happened? Mm. Mm -hmm. I left that job. And right after I left that job, God started opening up all these doors. Come on now. Because God doesn't talk to you about what's next until you leave what's now. It's bottom line. If it's a faith move, if it's a faith move. Now, if it's your move, you get to put all the strategy into it and you can have your little growth chart and your little plans out and you can go, in January, I'm going to do this. In February, I'm going to do this. In March, I'm going to do this. In April, I'm going to do that. Again, I love uh, Proverbs 16 and 9. We make our own plans. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is the one that determines our steps. I think that verse was, was created for me because I'm a strategist. He lets me make my plan, yeah. and I let him throw it in the trash. <laughs> I just need to, I just need, just let me write it down. I right. just need to write it down like I got control. You ultimately in control, <laughs> sir. I just need some semblance of control. Before you wide it up and throw it in the trash, just let me write it down first. And then if you just want to, you know, cast it into the sea, sir, it is yours. My life is yours anyway, but I just feel better. I'm a strategist. I feel better when I at least can come to Juliet and be like, here's how I think it's going to go. And the Lord just be chuckling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he just throw it away, you know? And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> Lord, it's your will be done. So, um, I hope I answered dude's question. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, um, if you, if you really believe that the season's up, you gonna have to bust a move. Mm -hmm. Bless you, baby. Um, and, you. and then, you know, God to handle it from there.
619 said, leave what's now and you'll see what's next. <laughs> I love that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I love that. Oh, I love you guys. Leave what's now. 619. <laughs> you'll see what's next. Yeah. <laughs> Those ad libs. You want me to stop? <laughs> Those ad libs, bruh. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, everybody. Oh, 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 sir. They ain't ready. Aha. We switching gears. They ain't ready. We switching gears. The tears gears. have fallen through the beard and we are switching. Oh, we yes. are switching gears, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. See, this live chat on Monday, y'all be <laughs> y'all be getting stuff other people don't get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all be getting and and listen, <laughs> there's 1,500 in the chat right now, mm -hmm. which means after I make this announcement, there may not be any more tickets left, Whoop. Ah. Whoop. which means people that watch the repost yep. may be so angry mm -hmm. because all the <laughs> tickets might be gone mm -hmm. by the time this live goes off. Whoop. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. mm. boys and girls, for the first time ever, I am announcing the launch of the app. And we are having a soft launch on home court oh. at the Irving Convention Center mm -hmm. on November 3rd, Friday night, 7 p.m. Is it 7 p.m.? I think it's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. for Christ. 7 p.m. 7 PM. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is, <laughs> I know I've been teasing it and I've been talking about it, but we we, we here now. We here now. Soft launch is no, November the 3rd, 7 p.m., Friday night, and uh, the national rollout is going to be uh, sometime next year. But this soft launch is for the early. Let me tell you who this soft launch is for. Yes, sir. The soft launch is for our early adopters. Th this is for the people that bought the iPhone before they knew what they was getting into. These are the people that chucked their Motorola Razor <laughs> and they Crackberry <laughs> and threw their Nokia brick yeah. in the in the ocean and took their T-Mobile sidekick. I was a holdout. <laughs> I will admit my T-Mobile sidekick. I loved it. Um. But this is for the early adopters. This is for the people that are down. These are the people that are committed. These are the people that are saying, yo, I don't even know what this is about yet, but I'm already in. I want to tell you that the official launch of this app drops on November 3rd, and I want you uh, to be the first to be able to get it. If you are already a member of the basement, right, whether at whatever tier, whether you are press B, whether you are a dweller, uh, whether you are a, um, a promoter, uh, you get you get first dibs as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. but one, once these tickets are gone, they're gone. I'm just I'm letting y'all know now. Once these tickets gone, they are gone. So we got a little promotional teaser Whoop. to drop on y'all, and uh, then I guess we just gonna sit here with reactions. Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's get we'll it. We'll probably play it more than once. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like we did the intro. Oh, you know it. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, did you already drop the uh, link for the uh, tickets? Mm -hmm. Okay, tickets are already live. Okay, dang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we was waiting to at least we showed the trailer. I know somebody already bought a ticket. They don't even know what they're coming to. <laughs> we, got, we got Stephanie from New York on us saying, drop it, drop I'm it. Just, so. I'm just happy to say that we don't have to say new app again. After I'm this. so glad we don't have to say new app again. Y'all about to get the name right now. We're going to come back on the other side. We're going to talk about Let's it get in it. three, two, one. Let's go. Too fly, won't quit. This is not for popular culture. Before we've done this deep healing work, will we still have wanted success? He opened it with the 12 gauge pointed at my face. This is the place, the platform, and the people that make up B-Side.
B-side? 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 Yo, I don't know. Whoa, we, that got so gang-oriented so quick. Oh, my God. They're going to think. Someone said, I don't want to be outside. I want to be on the B-side. <laughs> B-side? I don't want to be outside. B-side? Let's go. For life. I'm so hype. I'm so hype. Hey, listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. B-side. The app launches in November. We are so excited. Mm. Oh, I cannot wait. The user interface is crispy. We got community in there. We got lives in there. We got every... I cannot wait until this drops. And so, uh, as you can see, we already got um, talent that have that have committed to it. I'm so grateful <laughs> uh, to both uh, Michelle and Lecrae. Yes, sir. Um, for taking... A, a chance with me and for being a part of this and for saying, you know what, we want to, we want to present not just a safe space for people, but a safe place. So that's why we're moving to this platform. Obviously we have other talent that we're still signing and those contracts are pending. That's why we can't announce everything right now. This is the first of many iterations of trailers that will be dropping between now and November, but we want you to come celebrate this, uh, this launch with us. Scripture says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Mm. God loves to see the work begin. Ooh, oh, we play, oh, 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 play the trailer again. Play the trailer again. Play the trailer again. We playing again. off these geese. We playing off these bees. You want to go again? I don't care. Let's do it. Too fly. Won't quit. Do it like. This is not for popular culture. Before we've done this deep healing work, would we still have wanted success? He opened it with the 12 gauge pointed at my face. This is the place, the platform, and the people that make up B-Side. Gotta thank my daddy because I love Yo, <laughs> uh, man, we just got that thing this morning, so we just, we is just excited Again? about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy's too turned up. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yo, so, um, yeah, we, we are, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So the B-side, this is the name of the app, so I don't have to say we have an app coming, we have an app coming anymore. The name of the app is the B-side. I'm so excited to bring this to... The world. I'm so excited to bring a platform that we think is going to be able to help people um, have conversations, um, have safe places to process, uh, get courses for discipleship. Like, ooh, it's a lot going on in there. <laughs> it's a lot going on in there. I said it's a lot going on in there. It's a lot going on in there. People are already saying they got tickets, bro. Yo, they got tickets. I got you. I got you. Get them tickets, y'all. Let's go. I want this thing sold out. Mm -hmm. It has to be sold out. It's in Dallas. Yeah, bro. And we got fifteen hundred in the chat. We could do this. We could oh, do this right now. Yeah. It could be yeah, sold out right, right this now. minute. Easily. I don't even know how much the tickets are. How much these tickets? Thirty-nine bucks, eighty-three cents. Oh, thirty-nine. I don't. Eighty-three I don't, cents. I don't. It's the weirdest <laughs> price point I've ever seen. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone asking about like where to download that kind of information won't be uh, public until the launch event. Absolutely. You have to be at the launch event. If mm -hmm. you are at the launch event, you literally get to press B. Yeah. Ooh! Think of Apple Keynote, but this is a B note. That Hello. Oh, you just going to keep playing. Hello. It. The B is too good. Bro. The B is just too Perfect. good. It could be believers. Yeah. It could be burritos. Amen. And we will have burritos, and uh, I'll be cooking them for Christ outside about four blocks down the road. We got Wes what? saying she just bought two tickets. <laughs> two Let's tickets right now. already in the building. Two tickets already two in tickets the building. Sold. Yo, we could literally be sold out before this pod is over. And we are planning right now, pray for us that we can lock it in. We are definitely planning to live stream this and you can buy a ticket online to live stream oh, it. Oh, yes. So pray for us as we try to get those logistics. Yeah. Uh, we want it to be a phenomenal experience. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be fire, yo. It's going to be fire. 
I'm so excited. It's going to be fire. Pumped. It's going to be fire. Ashley so, Franklin, ticket in hand. Ticket in hand. Locked Let's in. go. Let's go. I'm. Uh, she printed it. Uh, maybe. Maybe <laughs> she has a fax. She has a little printer fax machine right next to her. <laughs> she was like, "Booyah, booyah, paper." <laughs> ticket in hand. No, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Ashley. No, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So yeah, uh, B side launch event. That soft launch is going to be like a keynote. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll be able to kind of like walk you through everything that's going to be in the app. Um, got some special guests that we can't even tell you about. I, you may or may not know them though. Huh? They may be, they may be, they may be with us though. <laughs> not maybe they will be. I'm excited. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we out here y'all. This app is going to launch, and we are going to, um, uh, we're going to turn the world upside down. I'm excited about it. But again, shout out to Michelle. Shout out to Lecrae. Yeah, dude. Um, early adopters. Early adopters. The first two to be like, let's get it. That's the right people, too. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. I'm with it. And um, there's more in the way, for people. There's more in the way. This, this uh, endeavor was never about me. Um, it was about us uh, providing a place, providing a platform where we could bring other voices that are just like ours. Voices that are hot. You, are, you already know what that means. Honest, open, and transparent. We needed voices that were hot, and we needed vo voices that were vulnerable uh, to go along this journey with us. And so when they said yes, we were like, let's get it. Let's get it. We're with it. So... Um, as vacuum cleaners are going off in the background. <laughs> hey, we have uh, yeah. people that are asking members that are not in Dallas, how do they get in uh, early access? That would be with when we uh, get the live stream yep. open and you could buy your tickets online. Yep. So we'll be doing that. Absolutely. Yep. So that answers your question. I'm not on the technical side. Uh, but listen to Hector, who just answered that question. And yay. And this is not a rinky-dink event. Mm -mm. I promise you. This is at the mm -mm. Irving Convention Center, fam. This is at the Irving Convention Center, seating for a thousand. Ooh, we home court. We just get to celebrate, man. This is a celebration. That's basically what it is. And it's a live event. It's yeah. a live basement episode. Mm -hmm. But we're launching this app, and this is going to be our first release to let everybody see it with their own eyes. <laughs> And so whether you are there live or you are there virtually, we we want you to be able to get in on this because it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. B note has me bugging, dude. That is just fire. The B note? Instead of the keynote, Instead the B note. The it's the a B, B note, bro. Like, yeah, I'm the B note speaker. Woo. Go ahead have B note speakers there. <laughs> B note, hey, listen. And we got your uh, black turtleneck coming in so that you can do a little Steve Jobs hitter. Yeah, with my jeans. But the black turtleneck has to be tucked into the jeans with no belt. <laughs> and I'm going to have to buy some New Balance shoes. <laughs> that outfit would never work on me. <laughs> huh? And we're going to drink apple juice? Got it. Noah has confirmed we're drinking apple juice. I, I And I know that, baby. If I don't know anything, I do know that your love for apple juice runs deep. Both of y'all are spell it with both of y'all are done with school. You guys are just overachieving <laughs> kids, just living life to the fullest. Yep. Got it. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about that at all. Actually, I'm the opposite of mad. I'm proud of you, <laughs> and I love you. You should be proud of yourself. Absolutely. Hey, and we got uh, uh, Cos Cost Campbell. Just donated forty eight dollars on the YouTube chat, saying I'm new to the basement, but I've been to Vegas many times. I'm not sure why we brought up Vegas, but maybe <laughs> she thinks we're doing the Vegas. So excited to see this! There is no place like a safe place. Can I sew a ticket, please? Love wow. y'all. That's awesome! Wow. Thank you so much, Julie. If you want to go ahead and pick someone from the chat, and uh, that is sponsored by let's, Camp Bell. Let's get some hands in the chat who don't have a ticket. If you need a ticket. Can't afford it, and you're on home court, DF Dub. Somebody's but crying in Chicago. Oh no, Les ninety nine cries in Chicago. <laughs> you have enough time, Ellie. Jump on Spirit Airlines and just yeah. with a backpack. 
Because that's all you're going to get on there. <laughs> yeah, yep. Julie. Facts. And it's going to have to sit in your lap, too. Let us know. We'll say it right now. We got hands. We got me's. Kids two years old are free. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. A lot would have to go wrong for me to be on Spirit Airlines. So I, yeah. I hope, I pray to God I never have to find Juliana's about to pick someone that's going to get sponsored. You got to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> they fly through real fast. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, uh, Mercado. Andrew Mercado, you just got a ticket player. Please. Let's go. Uh, or Julie will reach out to you, drop your IG, and we'll connect with you, sir. Love you. Don't be so lucky next time. Mm -mm. What? Not the threats. <laughs> Somebody said cries in DC. Somebody was crying from the Congo. Cries in Bitcoin. Oh, no. Cries in Bitcoin. Somebody's crying from Central Oregon. Everybody crying. Is this not enough time for y'all to come? <laughs> it's a tear. It's a tear fest over here, bro. I can understand cries from South Africa and cries from the Congo. <laughs> I don't understand cries from. So you're able to connect with him. Okay, cool. Sweet. Sweet. Corpus Christi. Corpus <laughs> Christi. If you're crying from Corpus Christi, cries from Houston. We're gonna get you a car. Yeah. Somebody's crying from Canada. Somebody's crying from Guatemala. Somebody's crying. Hey, somebody's gonna be a somebody's Kimmy Coleman is weeping from the subways of New York. Well, not the subways. Man. Let's take a subway over here. It's not that hard. Somebody, <laughs> some, somebody's weeping from the five train. Oh, no. She's on the train now. That service underneath the That's impressive. Underneath that concrete is she's pretty, coming through. Is, what is, she's coming on? here. <laughs> Let me know. Verizon got it like that? Yeah, I'm like I'm, I'll she got now she got singular. <laughs> she got that metro. <laughs> Somebody's crying from Fresno. Y'all, okay. <laughs> crying from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Af nope, 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 not from Tulsa. You're going to get in that car and you're going to drive. Yep. You can make it. You yep. can make it. You can make it. I'll cover your gas money. Get in that car and get down here. Yep. They said, How did you know I had Verizon? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, the only, right. that's the only way you can be underneath the ground <laughs> yep. and still getting coverage to cry on. Somebody said cry from Vegas. <laughs> Somebody said they crying from Corsicana, Texas. Bro, drive over here. <laughs> We're all in Texas. Somebody said they crying for anyone flying Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Somebody said don't pick me. <laughs> I'm going to have to sew into somebody's ministry if, if you had to be on Spirit. I'm not gonna let you. I'm not gonna. That, I, mm -mm. Not around me. Hey, and we got and we got things planned for all of you out of staters and people far from the DF. Uh, we won't say what it is yet, but we got some special special things planned for y'all. It's gonna be dope. Crying from Nigeria. I'm coming to Nigeria at some point, y'all. For real? Yes, of course. That's where that's where our ancestors are from. from my, somebody said crying from my job. Yeah, from the Yoruba tribe. Yoruba? That's where we come from. Yeah. Nigerian? Yes, sir. Yoruba? Yes, sir. Let's go, cousin. <laughs> Let's go, cousin. Somebody said, fellow Nigerians, let's weep. <laughs> let's weep. Not, not a national outcry. <laughs> <laughs> not solidarity. Instead of a watch party. What is happening right party, now? Bro. Why are y'all doing this? This is supposed to be a happy celebration, <laughs> and all we're doing is shouting out weepers. <laughs> Oh, we didn't man. die. So many people crying, bro. We just launched an app. We didn't kill it. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> huh? I need somebody to rejoice in the joy in the God of their salvation at this point. <laughs> Lord have mercy. No, nope. <laughs> not an hour. You just lazy. <laughs> you in the whole Metroplex talking about you crying. Somebody said crying for my job. <laughs> <laughs> crying for my cubicle in Nebraska. Uh, no. <laughs> Texas and they crying. It's not really fair. Really, the only ones should, should be crying is crying YouTube. Crying from Arizona. Just drive over here. If y'all in like Louisiana, Texas, Arizona, just drive. Like well, listen. It's out here now. Hey, dude. The yeah. B side. We are less than a month away from the B side going live. I cannot tell y'all how excited I am about it. I cannot tell you how um, grateful I am that we have the support of this community and um, uh, the support of our investors, the support of everybody. This is a massive undertaking. Like, this is not no, this was more than a notion. 
Mm-hmm. We've been talking about this literally since the beginning of the year. Planning for it, praying over it, the logistics for it. I mean, as y'all know, you know, bringing something like this to market is no small feat. So um, I'm excited to see what the Lord does. And um, I'm grateful that you all have chosen to rock with us as we step into this space. So um, get your tickets. And those that uh, can't get their tickets, uh, I need you to rejoice with those that rejoice. We will weep with those that weep later. <laughs> yep. But this is a celebration. Yes. <laughs> this is a celebration. And whether it is in person or virtual, we'll figure that out. Um, but I want this place sold out. Like I, I, w- I need a thousand people to be in that building. Mm-hmm. A thousand. That's easy. It's home court, fam. I need I need all the dwellers to turn up. I need all the dwellers. I mean, our first live event in our own backyard at mm-hmm. the Urban Convention Center. I'm excited about it. Somebody asked if Tome is still a thing. Uh, maybe when you show up at the B-side, you'll find out. <laughs> w marketing. Hey, that's how you answer that question. I need an answer. Who's Woody? Son privilege. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that is. Ashley's flying into DFW Airport. That's right. Fly straight into DFW. You fly in the DFW, Ash, you will be at the venue in eight minutes. You could actually uh, uh, stay at the Westin, which is, like, connected to the Irving Convention Center. Uh, the Toyota Music Factory is there. Great area. Pl- great area. Vibe is so dope. Cozy. Los Colinas. It's a little jewel. Walkable little area. Mm-hmm. You'll be good. Uh, Manal said, I hope I'm saying that right, Manal, uh, thank you more than you know for your prayer for both Israelis and Palestinians. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we just got uh, a Terrence. They, they're sponsoring another person. Got my ticket already. Thanks for the initiation, Campbell. Here's a donation for another dweller to join us. Wow. This, wow. Is, yeah. this is the thing about our community. Yep. It, it's y'all's generosity. Y'all are wild. Mm-hmm. Y'all are buying tickets and then giving tickets like th- that's I, I keep uh, I was at an event in Vegas last week um, about uh, it was called WealthCon and um, they had a social media panel. So I was on that panel and I told them that a community is completely different than an audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Yep. And we have a community. Absolutely. We don't we don't just have a crowd. We don't just have an audience. We have a community. An audience can support you. Nope. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me back that up. An audience will consume your content, but they don't have to support you. Yes. Mm-hmm. That part. Ask anybody streaming. Mm-hmm. Yep. Music as opposed to purchasing it. Right? Yep. Like an audience is completely different than a community. Taylor Swift has a community. Yes, she does. Those Swifties? Mm. <laughs> Showing up at football games. They'll do... <laughs> Beyonce has a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all can talk about her all she, all you want to. She's created a community. Yep. These people go by outfits that she dictates. Yep. I want you to wear this. And they go... They go... What? Mm-hmm. You can't get people to show up to church on time. Mm-hmm. And these jokers went and bought a whole outfit and pressed it, <laughs> took the little lines out of it. Emptied their savings, bro. Listen, just to go just to go be a part of an experience, that's, but that's what a community does. Yeah. Our community, our community is like, I'll be there and I want somebody else to come with me. And I don't presume that they have enough money, so I'm just going to buy it for them. Y'all some generous people. SML Project says that they have a ticket to give as well. Let's go. (laughs) Margaret Long, ask your Bible question. I'm in the chat right now, girl. Ask your Bible question. Margaret Long, I'm looking at you. You done said it twice. Uncle Tim, I have a Bible question. Now I'm going to need you to use them thumbs. (laughs) Margaret Long has a Bible question. Use the thumbs. Margaret Long, you done put it three times. You spamming that. The Lord is calling. (laughs) 
You have a Bible question, Margaret Long. Hello. <laughs> we waiting. We waiting for your Bible question, Margaret Long. God is here. I'm waiting. <laughs> this is what happens when you spam something, and then when yeah, you get yeah. called, you be like, oh, <laughs> up. <laughs> Thumbs is flying. <laughs> She's getting put you on got her Come on. Y'all y'all look out for Margaret's uh I'm looking. Someone <gasps> I Paris phone is my favorite person right now. She said it must be from the old testament. <laughs> <laughs> hey why, Timmy. That's why it's taking so long. Reverend Tim? Yes, sir. We got a hundred tickets sold right now as we speak. Let's Ooh, get it. Let's go. Nine hundred left. Nine hundred left. Let's go. We out here. Uh-uh, Jerome Rivers said, can I take Margaret's turn? She in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, Margaret, here we go. Uh, why did God allow everyone who knew Joseph die off and God's favor die off from him? From what I understand, after reading, Joseph's brothers did not steward their money well, and as a result... Here's part two. Ooh. Oh. Oh, she said she emailed it. Oh, she said she emailed it. <laughs> and as a result, I emailed it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Joseph's brothers and as a result I emailed it. <laughs> can y'all get Margaret's question in there and root 10 for a copy one sec I don't see a Margaret for Christ I don't see it reset for Christ Mama Argus. I don't see anything Marg <laughs> okay so somebody's asking about Christian sororities and fraternities mm -hmm. um, you're, you're not going to like my answer um uh I don't think there's any for uh I, I think I think the body of Christ is the biggest sorority and fraternity in the whole world. And everything else is a knockoff. I don't see anything wrong with it on the surface from like college and connecting to your community and all that kind of stuff. But your if your identity in your fraternity is above your identity in Christ, then your fraternity or, or your sorority is an idol. So if that jacket you got on and that sound you make is above Christ and you have an idol, that's my, that's my thing. I've literally traveled the whole world and ju I've jumped off planes in Malaysia and got picked up by a brother in Christ. I've got dropped off in Singapore, not like I was deployed, <laughs> like, I was, like I got dropped off behind enemy lines. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I've flown to Singapore and got off the plane and hugged my brothers and my sisters in Christ. So the body of Christ is the greatest fraternity and sorority that the world will ever know. Because we get to be brothers and sisters of which Christ is the firstborn. And um, again, I don't, I don't, on the surface, I have no knock against um, sororities or fraternities. What I do have a knock against is when you find your identity more in that than you do in Christ. If you need me to go deeper, if you if you love your ethnicity more than you love your identity in Christ, you have an idol. Now. Okay. Is is did we get hers? Did that email come in? Sold themselves into slavery was supposed to be temporary. Nothing right? yet. Um, they well, were we can we can definitely go down a different route. Yeah, I was trying to wait for it, but um, it's all good. We got to huh? finish. Yeah, finish the question in the chat. What she say? Where it at? Where it at? Jules, if you have it, go ahead and say it on the mic. Uh, sold themselves into slavery, but was supposed to be temporary, right? They were supposed to take the seeds, plant them, and what happened? Did God just let them pay the consequences of their actions? Question mark. I don't know. I apologize. I don't know. All I know is that when Joseph, uh, by the time Joseph died, there arose a Pharaoh that knew not the God of Joseph. Mm. And that put the Israelites in a very... Uh, pressurized, uh, pressurized and persecuted situation. However, as we find out uh, 
in the narrative in Exodus chapter number one, the more that they were afflicted, the stronger they grew. Um, and this is what people don't understand about uh, persecution and pressure. You don't get stronger unless pressure is applied. And this is the this is the reason why, as much as America wants a revival, they don't want the very thing that brings it. Yeah. Pressure and persecution. Mm -hmm. We're too comfy. Yeah. All these other all these other countries around the world, they see they see revival happen, they see miracles happen, they see all this stuff happen, but they they don't run from persecution because they can't. They don't have the option. But we're so cozy and comfy in America. That any sign of inconvenience is taken as persecution. This we ain't being persecuted. We're being inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. We're not being persecuted. So, uh, this question says, "How do I stop fornicating with my girlfriend?" We both agree on biblical idea, but we keep on doing it. Where do I start going for therapy? Oh, you 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 need to stop seeing her. Mm. I didn't say. Notice what I said. Yeah, I didn't say break up with her. I said, stop seeing her. You both believe it wrong, but you keep doing it. That means when y'all get together, the scriptures go out the window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stop seeing her. Take a fast from one another. You've already had sex. I hope, uh, I hope it was great. Take a picture of it in your mind. <laughs> so as soon as, Some people are literal. I'm sorry, mama. As I said that out loud, I forgot it was 2023. <laughs> These jokers probably already taking pictures, so I need to stop. Um, but but y'all, listen. I I, deal, I dealt with this so much when I was a young adult pastor because the the, the the majority of the people were single. Yeah. So if you've if if you've already had sex and you know that it's wrong and the Holy Spirit is convicting you, the fact that you said it in the chat lets me know that the Holy Spirit has convicted you on this. So if you know the Holy Spirit is convicting you. You and your girlfriend agree that it's not the right thing to do, but you keep doing it, then y'all need to stop seeing each other. Then go to therapy and don't make the therapy about having sex with your girlfriend because that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. That's the way you are uh, uh, numbing yourself to the real realities that are even deeper than that. You don't have a sex issue. You probably have an insecurity issue, an attachment issue. You probably have a abandonment issue. There's something else deeper, but you won't know until you remove your body from hers. That's good. So y'all need to stop seeing each other until such time that both you and her can get to the root of your issues. And then, thank you, Holy Spirit, after you do that work, just talk to each other on the phone. Mm. Let them know how it's going. Oh, yeah, you see, you ask these questions, but then when the answers come, you don't want it. Y'all shouldn't see each other for 90 days. Mm -hmm. Then we'll find out what your relationship's really about. A 90 days. Mm hmm. <laughs> Put your body on a 90 day probation. That's good. From even having proximity with this woman. And vice versa. She needs to have 90 day probation proximity from 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 you. As her boyfriend. Then you're going to find out what your relationship is really built on. Because right now you don't know. Y'all keep having sex. This person says... So uh, right now you don't know if you love her or if you just love her vagina. Right now, she don't know. You don't know if she loves you or just loves your penis. Right? You don't know right now. Y'all know y'all y'all know the word, though. Y'all know y'all know y'all like each other. Y'all like each other enough to start having sex. Let's find out if you like each other enough to abstain. And I promise you, you'll find out in 90 days or less. If y'all really about that life and really for each other, y'all should still be around in the next 90 days. But if one of y'all, I can't take all that, then I promise you, the only thing that was holding you together was sex to begin with. Sex belongs in marriage because sex is glue. Mm. The problem that we currently have is that too many people are sticking themselves together without committing their lives to each other. Y'all exchanging fluids and having exchange vows. Child, I'm cooking in here. 
Mm -hmm. Huh? I hear my grandmama now. That's my grandmama spirit right there. That's that old Birmingham, Alabama spirit. That's that Cherokee coming out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all need to, y'all need to figure out what this relationship is really built on, and you're not gonna find that out until you remove the component that we call sexual intercourse. So this person says, for the sex matter, what about people that were married and now trying to live a life of celibacy? Listen, listen, we don't talk about this enough. Mm -hmm. When you have been married mm -hmm. and then go through a divorce or you are widowed, your sexual desire is completely different than a single person that's never been married. Yeah. Because you have legally been having sex. You've had a rhythm of sexual intercourse with your spouse. And then that has been broken. Your body is still on that clock. Mm -hmm. No matter what your sexual appetite, frequency, whatever it was, matters not. But you had a normal or should have had a normal time where you were connecting with your spouse. And if that's, if that's broken through divorce or that's broken through um, uh, death of a spouse, you, your body's your body is still having that craving and that desire, and there's nothing wrong with you. Can, can, first of mm -hmm. all, can we redeem yep. the sexual appetite? Yep. You are not evil because you want sex. You are not, you are not in sin because you're aroused or you're horny or, or, or whatever. That, that, none of that is, what are we talking about? That just means you work correctly. If you just happen, I'm not saying you are purposely going to watch pornography or something like that, but let's just say you're watching something on TV and you didn't know it was going to turn into something steamy. Or say you were just, I don't know if people channel surf anymore. People just watch stuff on their phone. So I don't know. I don't know. But if you, it, back in my day, <laughs> I'm 48 years old now. I, I, I feel ancient. Uh, uh, back in my day, there you had to channel surf. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you could just be flicking channels innocently and then run up on something that you didn't expect to see. And if you're aroused... That doesn't mean you're dirty or you're bad. That just means your body works correctly. That's biology. So I I I I have I I have walked Juliet and I have walked people through divorce and their sexuality and their sexual drive as they navigate divorce. And um it's all about accountability. You just got to know your body's going to be asking for something that is no longer there and you don't get to go get a cheap replacement for it mm. just because, well, I was used to it and I should get some and I'm grown and that's my business. Your body doesn't belong to yourself. So <laughs> Randy, Randy Screen said, uh, it's funny that his last name is Screen, but Randy Screen said they swipe it now. <laughs> they ain't flicking channels. They just swiping now. Yep. And that's true. Yep. So you're right. <laughs> so. Um, oh, that's good. I'm looking for healthy ways. Ooh, uh, uh, Rianne, I think it's Rianne C., uh, Tim, what are some fruitful ways to rest while being in a season of separation from family and friends? I'm looking for healthy ways to rest without a screen. Ooh, books, exercise, walking, um, uh, painting class, pottery, if you like working with your hands, um, gardening, uh, huh? Not bear crawls, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's gangster, though. I mean, if they like that thing. Um, uh, playing video. Oh, you said without a screen. Um, uh, writing. Um, uh, spoken word. Now, when I say spoken word, I'm not talking about, like, putting together a whole poem unless you're creative like that. I'm just talking about um, talking your feelings Pull up the voice note on your phone mm -hmm. and just talk into it. And just talk into the voice note for 60 <laughs> seconds. Talk into it for 90 seconds. Talk into it for three minutes. Talk into it for five minutes. Um, uh, tell your own story. Get comfortable with your own story. 
Um, oh man, I, I keep going on that. Uh, fly a kite. <laughs> Read a comic book. Yes, sir. Um, there's so many. I mean, I could just keep. I saw. Um, oh, actually, uh, Noah had to do um, bear crawls yesterday, and so he was out in the front yard, and I saw the most beautiful butterfly mm-hmm. fly right across the front yard, and I just wanted to close the door and just chase it. Yeah. It was just beautiful, yeah. right? And so, like, going outside is a thing. Touch mm-hmm. grass. Huh? Touch grass. You touch grass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Touch grass. Like, just be be around nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you touched a lot of grass yesterday. <laughs> you did. Um, so so I hope those are, are just some suggestions that can spur you on. Um Go go do indoor. Uh, me and Corey a week and a half ago, we went K one racing, on the little racetrack. We just went and did go karts. Yeah. In the middle of the day. Yeah, I love that. Both entrepreneurs, both got a lot of responsibilities, and we said not today. We're mm-hmm. gonna go play. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. just gonna go play. Not doing it. And so, um, create something. Recreate. That's what that's what this this season's about for you, um, but but do something that brings you enjoyment. Notice I didn't say read the Bible and and nothing like that. That you should be doing that anyway, right? But when you're talking about like enjoying, right now I'm enjoying playing Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. It just came out like last week, and I'm already forty percent done with the main story. What? <laughs> I'm about that life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And this is in the middle of an app launch and all this kind of other yeah. stuff. If I don't take a break from me, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I'm reading books and I'm reading the Bible and I got the revelation. Nah, 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 nah. I love it all. And then I just need like mindless stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still play Ghost Recon from like 2015 or 2017, whenever it came out. So find something that you love. Um, and this is full circle back to what you were saying, Sammy, about you got to find something. You need an outlet regardless. Yes. Right? Yep. It, let, let's, be, let's go back to the person with the fornication again, mm-hmm. right? Like, like you're going to need an outlet regardless. But you know um, that sex before marriage is not what our rabbi has mandated. Yeah. So you might need to go work out. You're going to have a dopamine hit working out too. It's never going to be as strong as powerful as um a sexual release but it is another but it is it does release endorphins and it does release dopamine Mm -hmm. eat a cupcake just don't eat 12. (laughs) (laughs) well for me dude it was um my childhood was spent with a porn addiction yeah so i didn't have a normal childhood yeah so it's a redemption thing for me yeah for sure where it's like now i'm collecting comic books right Cause that's what and you would have been doing if you weren't if traumatized a as a kid, and the Lord's bringing it back. Now it's very therapeutic for me to bag and board these comics. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, and that's a real comic collector right there. Yes, sir. If you don't know what bag and board means, hey, bro, you're not a real comic clear book boards. Collector. Let me tell you. <laughs> Somebody said, "Jump on the trampoline or go for a river walk." <laughs> uh, somebody said, "Can you explain the difference between an ultimatum?" Uh, yeah, ultimatums are... Somebody said I should offer somebody an ultimatum. Is there a good time to offer ultimatums? No. Uh, let me double down on this. All ultimatums um, are manipulative. Manip- blah, blah, blah. All ultimatums are manipulative. Mm. Hear me, I'm going to say it slower. Ultimatums are manipulation because it is you trying to get someone to do something you want them to do. You cannot control anybody but you. So it's to say, if you don't do this, then I'm going to do that. That's manipulation. It's never going to work. How many ultimatums actually work? Anybody? Show of hands. How many ultimatums? Like, I gave this ultimatum. I put my foot down. You change or else. (laughs) People can't even obey their own ultimatums. I'm going to work out this year. How many gym memberships have gotten rich between January and March? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only to see them same people disappear before the end of March. So ultimatums don't work. Uh, boundaries do. Because boundaries, don't, boundaries are not put in place to change the person. Boundaries are put in place to protect you. That's why I tell people, do not put out ultimatums. Just put out your boundary. It's not change or else. No, it is, hey, I love you, and I want a relationship with you. I want to be connected to you. But your behavior is dangerous, and it causes me stress. If this continues, I will have to remove myself. Because the frustration and the stress is too much for me and it's too overwhelming. You can do whatever you want. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be here. That's the difference. Instead of you trying to get them to do something, you just tell them what you are what you are not going to be a part of. And that's not an ultimatum. That's a boundary. It's not an or else. This ain't even a because th- ultimatums come across as a threat. If you do this, then I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Boundaries are like, hey, do what you want, but I won't be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I told, I told all my friends, if we go, if we go to, you know, we, when we went, before I got saved, we went clubbing and da 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 But I, already, I, I told them, I said, hey, I'm never going to ride five deep in my car. You can forget it. Um, so four, four uh, passengers... I mean, I'm sorry, three passengers is th- my limit. I'm never going to ride five deep. In L.A., you just attracting the police. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, if you have weed or any other drug paraphernalia or a gun, you can't be in my car. It's my boundary. It's not, you better not have no weed on you. You better not have no gun on you. No, you can have a gun on you. You just won't be in my car. The end. I get to control this. I don't get to control what you do. I'm just controlling my space, my car, my space. So, all right, peeps, it's time to eat. <laughs> Amen. Bye-bye. Mm-mm, not the quick bye bye. It's <laughs> <laughs> my baby. Uh, Deanna Hare Jones. I'm local and I would love to come to the launch. I live in Fort Worth. Come through, yeah. Deanna. You can, uh, uh, King Mark, PlayStation all day, every day. X square triangle circle. <laughs> Xbox doesn't exist in this house. <laughs> I'm sorry, Xbox players. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Y'all just don't got the better. Y'all just don't got better games than us. You don't. Our <laughs> titles, issue. our titles crush. Right. That. All y'all got is Gears of War Seven. <laughs> Same game seven times over. Mm. Yeah, y'all gotta play games. Abina said, "What you having to lunch today? What you having for lunch today, Unc? Have you ordered already?" <laughs> I haven't. Juliana has been so nice to me today. It's probably because I was reading the Bible in Spanish. She said, "Okay." Yeah, yeah. He gets a pass. Somebody said, no, nah, we got Game Pass. <laughs> of course, yeah, I'm getting Spider-Man 2. I'm literally just playing this game until Spider-Man 2 comes out. Then I'm going to be all over the place. I will be at, um, I will be at uh, V3 this week in Tulsa. Yeah. So that They're would be dope. Through. That would be dope. Of course, I've seen all the Spider-Verses. Amazing. Currently waiting for number three. Yes, mm-hmm. we are all waiting for number three. Yeah, I did get a new hair. Um, not. I mean, I got my hair braided. I have a lot of hair now, and so, uh, the two two strand twist, two strand. Tw- <laughs> just disrespectful. <laughs> I'm 48 and I have a head full of hair. The it's just the Lord. <laughs> I I don't take credit. It's it's Nigeria and Ghana. That's what it is. It's both of them at the same <laughs> time. Um. Um. I am. I am. Uh. Um, yeah, I have a lot of hair on my head now. And so two strand twist is a, they call it a preventative hairstyle or protective hairstyle or both. And so I'm, I have put my hands in, I put my head into the hands of black women. Um, I believe, uh, 
us doing our hair has always been a bonding, tribal, beautiful thing. It's something that I find very spiritual. And so I go up to this uh, place that takes care of natural hair. And um, ooh, what's the lady's name that does my hair? I forgot. But I, I just put my head in her hands and she just comes out with these styles. So, And I came home and Ju Juliet gave me a look that I was like, I'm keeping these. <laughs> I'm keeping these jokers right here. <laughs> I'm keeping these jokers right here. I came home with that, with this, with this hairstyle. Juliet was like, ah. Oh. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. So um I do have W Riz. That's how I got your mama. Uh okay, y'all. I love you, but we gotta go eat. Uh thank y'all so much for these words of affirmation. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for already buying tickets. I want this thing sold out, y'all. Please. Please, please, please. Okay. That Apple energy. Yeah, Nate, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. Energy. In line for the iPhone. Yeah, right. Nate. <laughs> puffed out tents overnight. Yeah, right. Nathan won people outside in a tent the night before. You want to play the promo one more time? I, I care about hygiene. Um, take, a, take a portable toothbrush. Reusable. All right. All toothbrushes should be reusable. Yeah. Or else yeah. the toothbrush industry would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one and done. <laughs> the cartel would be out of business. They'd, they'd be like, we don't have to sell cocaine, coca cocaine anymore. We could just sell <laughs> toothbrushes yeah. if they're one and done. We could barely get people to use the toothbrush they got. Some people's hygiene is just not right. Y'all want to show this? Uh, uh. Yeah, there might the be out. some people who trickled in last minute, yeah. so we can do one last promo. Let them know what's going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If y'all don't, if y'all don't know what we're talking about right now, um, let's take a look right now. About to find out. Too fly, won't quit. Can't do it like, do it like, can nobody else do it? Do it like this. This is not for popular culture. Before we've done this deep healing work, will we still have wanted success. He opened it with the 12 gauge pointed at my face. This is the place, the platform, and the people that make up B side. Gotta thank my daddy because I look like this. Bam. It's beautiful. I love it. Love it. So happy. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We did that too fast. <laughs> Too fast, too fast, too fast. <laughs> and that beat is fire. It Shout is. out to Manuel Reyes. Manny Reyes. That's why I'm going to learn Spanish and speak so fluently. It's them R's I can roll. <laughs> That's why you're going to speak Spanish fluently. Okay. Um, all right, peeps. Uh, we're going to go eat now. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. This is so Kojic of me right now. <laughs> May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Peace. Press B with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh, yeah. So press B with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be.